morning all. Uh, it's Saturday morning, 4th of April, and I hope I find you managing, coping, maybe thriving. And um, I wanted to bring you all into a new space today. Um, after a really deep revelation a couple of days ago. Um, and it's about a conversation. And it's about a conversation with vulnerability. Yesterday, chatting to my son online, who is already a very wise man, I talked into vanity and how my vanity stops me jumping out of bed and making a quick video, you know, when the inspiration comes in. And I want to invite you all into that conversation because 2020 will force us into these vulnerable spaces. And my conversation with my son was what prevented me was being bothered to kind of tidy myself up and, you know, do something more than Saturday morning, shower hair, put some makeup on and look pretty for the world. And this time is, this is the divergence. Oh, look at that, it looks like a chalice. <laughs> that feels good. This is the divergence where we're being asked to decide what we're gonna take forward with us during this whew, transformational time. And one of the things I don't want to take forward with me is my vanity. Um, and that part of me feels nervous. But she's rising. It's like this plume of energy over my heart. Oh. <coughs> And for all the times that she was judged and for all her lifetimes, um, and for all the times that she felt nervous that she wasn't good enough or whole enough or pretty enough or nice. Look up the etymology for the word nice or nice enough. She's really nervous now, I can feel that in me. And so this deeper conversation with self is about rebirth. It's about how do we birth the parts of ourself that have been or are hidden? And I heard a lovely sentence this morning. I am but a drop in the ocean, and all the oceans are but a drop in me. There is no separation. This is the we. Um, I just need to move this through me. Bless her heart, that part of me is so scared. In 2016, 2015 or 2016, I did a workshop um, um, that comes out of the Marion Woodman Foundation. It's the most powerful workshop I've ever done, bar none. And I did it as part of my uh, development into working with um, PTSD or complex PTSD. So it was a clay mask workshop, um, but it was done at the Festival of Samhain. Um, and so it kind of, it brought nature in, well, it brought clay in, literally. Oh God, I've just realized something. It brought clay in. And so in the 3D, it was, it was teaching us how to use clay to process trauma because uh, trauma breaks timelines. It ruins your photo album. 
and so words this this part just is is a is a mess so to move somebody who's with ptsd or any kind of trauma into you know the right feminine side of the brain and to work through this left receptive energy can help process some very very deep trauma so in 3d level working with clay and trauma was awesome and a multi-dimensional level um, we arrived and we sat in a circle and i was asked something that knocked me off my guard which is a great start and uh, marianne dunley who ran the workshop amazing uh, jungian psychologist therapist just oh god psychotherapist sorry ignore the word psychologist psychotherapist looked straight at me looked straight through me and said chrissy what's your word for this workshop i went oh resurrection and resurrection has been with me since 2016 and i'm sharing this with you because at the moment um, my resurrection is taking me right up the fractal because my work in the world isn't to be in it it's to be looking through it so that i can breathe through it and help the collective so that I can whisper into the shadows. That's sweet. And um, so this led to um, me spewing out writing after the workshop and resurrection became resurrecting the crone, which was um, a three part blog post that I wrote because I couldn't find the crone in society i can't find her where is she where is that old wizened gray woman where is she and so i think it became a kind of invisible wish um to move into that and um Around that time, 2014, 15, I was coming to the end of my life in the corporate world, um, where during the last, probably the last eight months to a year, I, the mischief in me wanted to go gray because she was tired of dyeing her hair, to go gray in a corporate world um, and to meet the face of narcissism was um, an absolute adventure and I, uh, it was an absolute adventure. Read about it. I'll put the links below to the crone thingy. And as I started connecting with this crone energy, she took me to all kinds of nature, all kinds of expressions of self. She helped my creativity to explode. Um, and she held me. She's very firm, but she held me. And she's helped that part of me to come out. And so there is a kind of divine timeline with this, since leaving the corporate world, uh, waking up with this explosion of a dream and following it, even though it made no sense at all. What I was doing was just radically stupid, but I did it and it worked like a charm and it set me free onto this journey that's brought me to here, wherever he is. And so why am I sharing this with you? I'm sharing this with you because look down at that picture and that picture is all about the shy self resisting coming forward. And it's all about, well, there's vanity in there and there's pride and there's ego and there's fear and shame and rage. So what gets challenged in me is the moral injury. As I rise, in a world that can barely meet its own rising self, well, that's gonna cause and trigger some dysfunction in the system. And as I rise, I'm having to, in a 3D, I'm having to literally screen everything that hits my phone, that hits my laptop, that hits my timeline feed. 
social media. I'm screening everything because I'm no use to anybody if I'm down here in the three D. I'm no use to anybody. I'm better off if I'm working with the feminine. So she warned me. She did warn me back in last year when I made those videos. Um, and I remember when I was working with not a client, but a fellow facilitator and we were helping each other to facilitate some shadow material. And um, she's an amazing woman, one of the best shadow workers I know. And she was bringing excuses, excuses, excuses. And I pointed a finger at her and I said, that shit will not fly in 2020. And I couldn't stop saying, I said it in a times three cycle, that shit, and it got stronger and stronger that shit will not fly in 2020. You will be needed. And so I've learned to trust the radical and impossible and ridiculous and in obvious more and more and more. And it's that, okay. So it's to be able to bring the, the radically impossible, embarrassing God, <laughs> God, you have to trigger the points in you that are blocking it to create the friction, okay? To create the sublimation. So just bringing it up a vibration and up a vibration until it becomes love wisdom, okay? Love wisdom, heart chakra, chalice, divergence. Okay, bring it up here. Wisdom, what have I learned from this experience? That's all wisdom is. And how can I apply that in the world? What have I learned from this experience and how can I apply that in the world? So if we're getting lost in the fear of all the misinformation and the misdirection that's floating around the system, because that's that, that purpose is to trigger your fear responses, which is a gift, which is a gift. If you take the trigger and work with it, fucking hell, what is this triggering in me? I feel so angry. I feel so, insert words here. How are you working with that? Okay. So I want to give a quick shout out to a um, crystal agate, I don't know what to call it, that found me um, in a shop I went to. I don't know if you'll be able, oh, you can. Look at this. This is called stromatolite. And this has really been helping me. Um, and I haven't fully researched it yet, but um, it's doing an awful lot of work with the collective at the moment. Um, research it, see what you find. In fact, I'm deliberately not gonna speak into this, but Stromatolite is bringing this uh, gorgeous clay, I'm with clay again, goddess, feminine, raging warrior but gentle and loving i haven't figured it out yet this is new so stromatolite um is has made itself known and then a friend sends me a message saying christy do you know what this stone is it's just appeared i went for a walk and it's just appeared on the path and i looked at the photo and i could feel it in my fingers and i just went lol that looks like stromatolite but your pendulum will tell you and my friend came back and went, oh my God, it's stromatolite, it's raw stromatolite just appeared. And I'm bringing that in for whatever, okay, for whatever. And the other thing that's helping me is my beautiful goddess stone. Okay. So this is helping me back into the original feminine. And it's the feminine that, it's kind of the no holds barred feminine. She's very raw. She's very... She will make you responsible for your own shit. <laughs> I love her. So, I, so this is called Menalite. But if you Google Goddess Stone, you'll start seeing pictures. It feels like, um, feels kind of rough. It's not smooth and shiny like this. She's rough. <laughs> she's rough. She'll take your skin off. But she's very loving. This energy is very loving. So I've been working with these two. Um, which has brought me into breakthrough after breakthrough. Um, one of the breakthroughs was um, 
a Marion Woodman video that appeared out of nowhere. Uh, my team, which are all aspects of me. My team loved to play with the internet and, uh, and I love to do research on the internet and suddenly these things just appear and I'm like, how did I get here? <laughs> I don't know how I got here. And um, they sent me this uh, Marion Woodman interview from 1991. And it's very Jungian and I love Carl Jung. And it talks about the shadow feminine and the shadow masculine. And it is as relevant today, if not more so, as it was back in 1991. I'm going to post a link for that too. Oh, wow. So here is my crone and here is what I've been resisting. Um, when I made those videos last year, um, I was always made up and, you know, and I only appeared without makeup once, but that's because my throat chakra was doing something and I felt poorly. Um, and so I don't want my vanity to stop me from being ready to do the work. And so at eight o'clock this morning, I had this realization and it all kind of came in. It's like, oh, wow. And when I had that conversation with my son yesterday about my vanity, my vanity stops me and that doesn't feel right. And he's a brilliant facilitator and he just shut up, basically. And I was, like, shut up, shut up, shut up. And I was just letting it all come out. And then he looked at me and he said, I think you just answered your own question. Now that is a sign of a very, very good facilitator. <laughs> I've answered my own question. Um, grow a pair and get the work done. Get the work done. Okay. Ah, big breath. Yeah. So we're coming into a deeper conversation with self. And the theme of most of my videos last year was um, communication. It was all about community. It's still all about communication. How am I communicating with this fear field? that strikes the fear of terror into me. It's designed to work with it, work with it. Call me, I can do some process work with you. Be with it, how can you be with it? You know, it's, the, it's like the growing up this. It's like that gorgeous meme I saw. It's like, uh, what was the meme? It was, it feels like Mother Earth has sent us all to our rooms to think about what we've done, okay? So you send naughty kids to their rooms and eventually they learn and they grow up. So this is the individuation, okay? This is the individuation whilst we are and will remain a collective. The individuation is, can I really be me? And watch the dysfunction that causes in the herd. It's that. Is that and I'm gonna end there do we want any cards sacred rebels let's see um three so the pink two how are you doing how are you doing this Saturday morning the sunshine is back beautiful um Went down to the corner shop yesterday and was um, slightly horrified. So, go, how do I meet horror? Um, and there were notices up everywhere about don't do this and don't do that. There were no encouraging, uplifting messages about, you know, we're helping you by putting yellow marker tape looked like a crime scene <laughs> the shop looked like a crime scene like every two meters there's a box and across all the tills is this sheet of perspex <laughs> like oh my god <laughs> amazing 
feel like there's another card. Are going to reflect all the light. Oh, yeah. I forgot to say, about eight o'clock this morning, I started this sentence, didn't I? I do this a lot. About eight o'clock this morning, when all of this came in, I thought, I need a space. And it can't be the therapy room. I need a space because I need to draw people in and I need to get out. And so I jumped up and I've torn my front room apart. Like, I mean, the set, settees all over the place, so what? And created this space because this is my world. This is my world. When I do peer practice sessions here, these crystals all come in and they build grids. Uh, my paintings hold uh, energy signatures and they come into the grids and it's all used. This is my world. Energy. I think I just wanted to share that with you as encouragement to bring your weird out. My kids said to me about 100 years ago, Mum, your problem is you've got a freak flag, but you just don't fly it. Okay. Okay. Oh, Lordy. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm sorry about the glare. Uh, this studio will get better. Listening for the truth, 36. I was studying vortex mathematics last night. That's part of the nerd in me, which is all about the 369. <laughs> this, this is card number 36, look. Listening for the truth. The 369 is immaterial. It's just energy. All the other numbers are material. Yeah. So I think in the last video I was talking about the avoidance of self. Watch that Marion Woodman video that I'm gonna post because she says so eloquently what I trip over. Um, the avoidance of self is the doingness Okay, so we have defined ourselves using the external world and using how others perceive us, that defines us. And it's all that, you know, I'm stuck at home, but the home looks gorgeous and it's spotlessly clean. I've done all the washing, I've done the gardening, whatever. How do you feel inside? When you tune in, that's where the truth is. Okay, so we're talking about body wisdom here. Your story is stored. In your cells, the body is the blueprint. Stores, it stores, it's a hard drive. So when you go in and drop down, and shh, and go with the first word that comes, and go with the first feeling that comes, have a pen, capture it, write it, paint it, model it, whatever, capture it, because nothing to do Sorry, it's nothing to do with cognitive mind. It's body. The body is the blueprint, it's also the betrayer. Okay. Well, I don't think I even need to speak into that. She, the feminine, the part of us that got rejected. She knows. She knows. She's in you, all of us. This is not about women and men. This is about the masculine and feminine energy that lies within us, the receptive and the active. Feel in. Feel in. Don't think out. Feel in. So number 22. Mm -hmm. Build it. Oh, wow. Oh, these cards. Yeah, trust yourself, trust yourself. How about the weird or the better, you know? If you get something that feels weird or seems weird, how about you trust that? How about you come off Facebook for a week, for a day, for an hour? 
and go in, draw and paint, mess up your front room. I don't know where I'll sit tonight. I may not sit tonight. And find new ways to be with yourself, you know? Yeah, it's all about the feminine. Uh, it's all about the creative, receptive, passive, feminine, wisdom. And I'm done for today. So I wish you a beautiful Saturday. Um, and yeah, that's it. Take care. Lots of love. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.